I think it's more interesting to see what has actually happened. Right. So there's a lot of companies that do this. Right. Uh, algorithmic trading is not a new thing. This has been around for some time now, um, probably starting with, uh, the, you know, Renaissance was one of the pioneers in this industry. They started somewhere in, I think, 1980 or 1990. I don't even think Windows existed back then. Right. This is all like MS DOS, like typing things into like a mainframe computer. Uh, and these guys, uh, when they started building this thing, it was, it was quite difficult. Right. Uh, to say the least, to, to try to build trading algorithms. So Renaissance, by the way, is uh, is, is a hedge fund, right? Um, and they've recently actually closed their doors. They don't even take outside capital anymore. If you told them you want to give them a million dollars, they would laugh at you and walk away because uh, they, they don't want any more money um, because the bigger that they get, the harder it is for them to make money. They'd rather just invest their own. So last time I checked, they had about $110 billion in assets. Uh, and that's all their own money. It's not other people's money that they're investing because they make way too much. They start off, and there, there's a really good book here, by the way, that I'm going to share with you guys. So it's a it's a very interesting book that I recommend that you guys read about the founder of Renaissance Technologies, and that's a guy named Jim Simmons. Uh, if you look him up, up on the Forbes list, he is one of the richest people on earth. Last time I checked, he was number 48 richest person on the planet uh, with a net worth of, I think, $52 billion or something like that. Um, maybe 30 something billion. Let's go Jim Simmons net worth, right? This is uh, $28 billion last time, you know, in 2023, right? One of the richest people on the face of the earth, right? He's the guy that started Renaissance Technologies somewhere in the eighties. Um, when it was basically very hard to do this kind of stuff with computers, right? Computers were brand new back then. They didn't even have windows. I don't think when he got started, and they figured out how do you get these computers to place trades for you, right? It took them a while to figure that out, how to actually build technology to do this. After they figured that out, then they had to figure out how do I make money doing this? I believe it took them something like a year or two uh, to get started with this. Um, mind you, for you guys, it would be much shorter because the technology has improved a lot. But for them, it took them a while because it was brand new stuff back then. And um, once they did figure this out, they made a crazy, crazy, crazy amount of money. Um, if you read the book and, and I suggest that you do, um, definitely a very good read. Uh, these guys basically went from not having any money at all to making so much cash that they were buying mansions and forgetting that they existed. Um, they're literally printing press in their house. It is absurd the amount of money that these guys are able to make and still make to this day, by the way. So there's a this is reported that they make 39 percent a year on average for 30 years if you ask jim simmons he actually says the number is closer to 66 percent a year right mm -hmm. uh, either way very high returns uh, 39 percent a year if you guys are not aware warren buffett 20 percent a year mm -hmm. uh, carl icon makes like 15 percent a year like 39 percent a year is probably puts them in the category of the best investor in all of history right um, and this is, this is not like a good year. This is like on average, right? So meaning that 2008 rolled around and, and, and actually, uh, by the way, this is over a period of 30 years, I think even 40 years, they've been doing this for a long time. And I think only lost money, like two quarters out of the whole 30 to 40 years that they've been around. They just never lose money, which means, you know, tech bubble burst, they're still making money. Uh, 2008 happened. The stock market was down 55%. They're still making money. Uh, this year, the stock market is down, or sorry, last year, the stock market is down, bear market. They're still making money. These guys just do not lose money. It's consistently year after year making tons of cash, 39% a year on average. Um, I, I think uh, I was watching an interview with them recently, and in 2021, I think they made around 120% returns. Now, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, I did some crazy things in crypto and I made a ton of money doing this. I made some 100% returns. What is that? First of all, let me pay attention to the fact, um, let's pay attention to the fact that they're doing this with $110 billion. Okay. <laughs> they're not doing this with a couple thousand bucks that bought some, some shit coin, excuse my language, um, and just shot up like crazy, right? This is, um, doing this with very large sums of money and it gets much harder, the bigger you get, right? So I actually strongly believe, it, you know, I've heard this, um, a lot of people say this too, like, you know, oh, if these guys are making 39%, I'm not going to get to that. I actually think you probably do better than them right? Because it gets a lot harder the more money you have, right? When you have 110 billion in assets, um, to make that extra 1% means you're making more than a billion dollars a year, 
right? Wow. So for them, making 110% in a year means that they made $100 billion in a year. Like that's absolutely ridiculous, right? So 39% a year on average for 30 years, right? So let's talk about what that means. What What is the implications to that, right? For Especially for those of you that have never studied finance, right? Um, so say you took um, $1,000 and you invest into the stock market, which usually makes about 10% a year on average, right? If you took that thousand dollars and you put into the stock market and you just walked away, waited 30 years, that one thousand dollars will have turned into about seventeen point five thousand dollars. Pretty good return for doing nothing, right? Seventeen times your money, not bad, right? This is why a lot of people tell you invest in the stock market. It is a good idea. I definitely agree with them. Okay, especially if you're a long-term investor. Now, seventeen k, that's pretty cool, right? If instead of making 10% a year, if you made 39% a year, and again, I think they make even more than this, but let's just say 39%, it's four times the returns, okay? So 40, about 40% versus 10%. It's not four times more money after 30 years. It's four times more money every year and it compounds, right? So year one, instead of having uh, $1,100, you'll have $1,400 and they make 40% on that money. And then 40% on that money. So it compounds. It's, uh, what's it called? Um, Albert Einstein said compound interest is the most powerful force on earth. And it's really the case here. So if you took $1,000, instead of putting it to the stock market, you put it with these guys, Renaissance Technologies. After 30 years, you would not have $17,000. You would have $19.5 million. Something like, what is that? A um, hundred times more money? More than a hundred times more money by increasing your returns from 10% to 40%, right? Um, very stark difference. This is this really stands to the testament of why compound interest is so powerful and why we really care a lot about making even these small improvements in, in your investor return. If you could go from 10% a year to 15% a year, even that small improvement, it literally could make the difference between you having you know a couple hundred thousand dollars versus you having a million plus, you know what I mean, over, over a couple of years. Compound uh, interest is, is really quite powerful. So that every little percentage really makes this big difference, right? Uh, and we talk about a lot in our classes. I could show you some pretty simple ways they could actually improve your returns, right? Okay, so that's Renaissance. That's one company, right? But they're not the only ones. There's a lot of companies doing this, right? Uh, another company doing this is Two Sigma. These guys, last time I checked, managed 60 billion in assets. That's probably a lot bigger by now. Um, this is, I think, two years ago that, that I checked this stat. Um, these guys, they, they really do quite, quite well. Last time I checked, they were beating the market consistently uh, on a risk adjusted basis. Um, really smart people running this company and uh, doing very, very well. Uh, another company that does this is Citadel. You guys may have heard of them. They've been in the news lately. Uh, Ken Griffin uh, got a little bit of heat because of some stuff. Uh, but these guys really do make quite a bit of money. Um, I, I, I think I heard it was like, 16 people work at this company. It's a very small company, very few employees, um, but they have 32 billion in assets that they're managing. And basically it's all just software code, right? Two Sigma, Citadel, it's all just software code. It's not people sitting there placing buy or sell orders. This is all machines doing this stuff. So they're able to scale this to lots and lots of money and make huge returns doing this stuff um, without you know them really even lifting a finger right uh, uh, they have just software doing it for them and if you are not familiar with citadel bridgewater is another really big one if you know ray dalio um he's been in the news a lot lately he manages the biggest hedge fund in the world 138 billion dollars i think probably a lot bigger than that now um he has written some very good books uh principles being one of the new ones um Really, really good books. I strongly suggest you read them. But he's also very big into um, algorithmic trading as well. And I'm going to show you actually a tweet that he put out recently, uh, specifically talking about how he's a big fan of trading algorithms and software code in general, uh, because really there's quite a bit of upside that you can get from it. Um, this is Ray Dalio. Um, again, manages the world's biggest hedge fund, $138 billion. He uh, has a really good Twitter account. I suggest you guys follow him on Twitter at Ray Dalio, right? You can follow him here and you can actually find this tweet. Uh, but he, places, he puts up uh, this principle of the day thing. That's like what he does. Uh, he has his principles. He loves to follow principles. Um, and one of his principles of the day was this. It was convert your principles into algorithms and have the computer make decisions alongside you. And he continues. He says, 
If you can do that, you will take the power of your decision making to a whole other level. Hashtag principle of the day. Right. High praise from uh, from one of the world's biggest investors. Right. Uh, and he continues on. He says, in many cases, you'll be able to test how that principle would have worked in the past or in various situations. I'll help you refine it. And in all cases, it'll allow you to compound your understanding to a degree that would otherwise be impossible. It will also take emotion out of the equation. Algorithms work just like words in describing what you would like to have done, but they are written in a language that the computer can understand. If you don't know how to speak the language, you should either learn it or have someone close to you who can translate it for you. Your children and their peers must learn to speak this language because it will soon be as important or more important than any other language. Very high praise from Ray Dalio here. Um, by developing a partnership with your computer, Alter Ego, in which you teach each other and each do what you do best, you will be much more powerful than if you went about your decision making alone. The computer will also be your link to great collective decision making, which is far more powerful than individual decision making and will almost certainly advance the evolution of our species. Wow, <laughs> very high praise from Ray Dalio here. Uh, one of the world's most successful investors, clearly a very big fan of algorithms. Um, and can you blame them? You know, like the success speaks for itself. Uh, people have made a lot of money using these things. And as computers get smarter and smarter, as we get deeper into AI and all the different things that it can do, it's only going to get more and more powerful. Uh, at this point, I'd say trading algorithms can pretty much do anything that a human can do in terms of investing, probably better, except 